2002, Herb Edwards said this, you have an obligation as a player, as an athlete, at any level, and it doesn't matter what sport it is. When you sign on, you sign on. You prepare that week to go win. I don't care about your schedule or how many people got hurt. It doesn't matter. You own it to the people in the building and the guys in the huddle to prepare yourself to win. You play to win. Hello? Right? It's a classic. It's going to live on forever. That quote from Herman Edwards. When you say you play to win, you and I, there, I don't want to say game, there is a war. There is a battle. And sometimes we go through it so passively as, as men, as leaders, but there is a battle, there is a game to win, and not, not for us to go through it passively. All of us have a win in every aspect of our life. Maybe you, you and I wouldn't use the word win, but you decided to cough up some money and come up to this conference to equip yourself as men, for us, all of us to grow as men of God. You determine what the win will be for you this weekend. You told your family, you told your wife, your kids, whoever, you told, you said, I'm going to prioritize this weekend instead of doing anything else. I'm going to invest in myself to equip myself to grow as a man of God. That was your win. You have a win, hopefully, for those who are married in a relationship. You have a win in your career. You have a win. In every aspect of our life, there is a win. If you and, I, you and I don't have a win, we end up saying the words of King Solomon. He says, if we don't have a win, we're as if we're chasing the wind. We're, it's so passive. We're, we're, if, we don't ha- if we don't label things in our life as a win, then we're passively going through life in which we'll look back and say, man, I, I, I never classified what was the win in this aspect of my life. If you don't define the win in your life, you'll adopt someone else's win. If you don't define, it's okay, everyone, that's fine. If you don't define the win in your life, you'll adopt someone else's win. If you don't deny, if you do not define the win for your marriage or your relationship, society will, social media will. Someone else will define the win for your life unless you define it yourself. Or forget you define it. Asking the source of life, asking God to define it for you. What is the win? If you don't define the win in your life, you'll adopt someone else's win. You'll end up dating like other people. If you do not define the win for those who are single or who are dating, if you don't define the win for you dating, you'll allow other people to define what dating should look like. If you do not define the fragile and delicate gift of sexuality, yourself, like if you do not define what the win is from God, society will define it for you. If you do not define the win for what your marriage is intended to be, divinely designed from God, of what it's intended to be, society will define that for you. You need to define what's the win for this battle that you and I are in. For those who are parents, if you don't define the win as a parent, you'll end up letting society determine how you should parent. Maybe some of us, we have a goal as far as our wins in different aspects of our life, different responsibilities that are not wins. Like, I don't want to parent my kids the same way my parents parented me. That's a not win. Or I don't want to, like, I don't want my marriage to be like that marriage. Maybe it's a bunch of negations. I don't want it to be like that. And maybe that's where the bar is set as far as our wins or our goals. But I pray that this weekend is a time for us to assess what is our win. And who defines what the win is for us? Is it us coming to our own conclusion? Is it allowing other people to define the win? This is a time for us to assess this question. What is your win? What is your win in your marriage? If you're dating, your view of, 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 of your worldview, who defines the win? Who defines what success is for your career? Who defines that? What is your win? I'll share something personal. Like for me, like a win for me, I want to be the most successful in ministry at home. Like to me, my number one priority is I want to win at home. Like I want 
that my, I give the best of my energy to my marriage, to invest in that. I give the best as a parent that I'm able to equip her with my daughter. Like that to me, that is a huge win for me. So I, I, I make sure everything else rotates around that priority. What is your win? I can't tell you. Like, and I pray, especially, uh, I'm glad Kareem, you mentioned like that we'll have the quiet time. It, it, unless it's something structured, I, I want us to prioritize this question. Assess the different aspects, the different hats you wear, the different responsibilities that you and I have. And define, what is the win? Who determines that win? What am I analyzing to determine what is the win or what's not the win? I want to share with you a words, but uh, first of all, maybe this name is familiar. Saul of Tarsus. Geography question, where's Tarsus? Uh, I believe tur Turkey? No? I thought it was... I think it's Turkey, but anyway. Saul of Tarsus, extremist. Extremist. He was a, a literal terrorist, okay? He was a terrorist. But he encountered the living God, and he ends up being... Yes, thank you. St. Paul the Apostle, who wrote a good portion of the New Testament, wrote a good portion of different letters to different small churches or, 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 or Christians following Jesus around the Mediterranean Rim. And this is just a, an icon following the Coptic Orthodox rites of, of St. Paul, as you see him holding many scrolls of him writing. For those who have physical Bibles or want to follow along, I'll have it on the screen as well, but open 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. So just so you understand, St. Paul now is trying to equip the people of Corinth who are following Christ, and he's wanting them to grasp the idea that there is a win for you to grow as men and women of God. So he's trying to empower them and for them to understand the reality of the spiritual warfare and battle that, that we're all in. So he wants to paint a picture, give them an analogy, give them an imagery for them to capture the reality of the battle that we are all in. So he's writing to the city of Corinth, which is in what country? This I know. Greece. Very good. So he's writing to the city of Corinth, and the, uh, to the Corinthians, and he tells them this. He's throwing them an open-ended question. Again, so and I want you to put on, like, go through the mind of St. Paul. He's trying to write to his audience. He's trying to capture them. So he's going to start with maybe some sports analogies, in order for them to understand. So he tells them this open-ended question. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the price, prize? Like he's telling them, you get this, you get this. In sports, not everyone gets a participation trophy and everyone pats himself on the back. No, there's, there's, there's a winner. Like in every sports, there is a winner, right? You get this. There's a competition and someone will eventually win the prize. So he's, oh, he's throwing out this question to capture their attention as they continue to read. So I'm sure the people of Corinth are like, okay, so far, so good, St. Paul. I'm with you. Yeah, there is a winner. There's someone who gets the prize. Run in such a way as you get the prize. He's like, okay, just as you get this in sports, there is, everyone is disciplining their body and pushing and being focused and stretching before the game to win the prize. You run in life this battle to win the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Again, he's using something in which his audience will understand. They do it to get a crown that will not last or perishable. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. What is he saying? He's like, no. Like, just as an athlete, it's not just like if I'm a boxer. I'm not just going to like, you know, yeah, I'm training. I'm not going to, you don't do that. Or if I'm running, I'm not just going to like, yeah, I'm just going to run in circles and that, that's my training. No, like you don't do that as an athlete to get the prize. So why would you do that spiritually? See, he says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is why an integral part to who we are as Orthodox men is that we, 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 we make sure that our body is disciplined. Just entertain me for a second. Name me a few exercises that the church gives us for us to be able to win toward the prize and discipline our body. As, as His Grace Bishop Basil mentioned, what are some of the things that we do to, to discipline or maybe to suppress our passions in order for us to... Uh, fasting, okay, very good. What others? Prostrations, very good. One more. Vigils, yeah, very good, very good. So the church in the richness and beauty. So 
So I want us, I, you need to define the when, but I also want us to understand what does it mean for us to be Orthodox Christians on purpose? Like, there's so much richness in which we are embedded in that we're part of the life of the church, this first century church. And the church gives so many exercises for us to be able to discipline our body, for us to have a clear vision of what the when is, of who we are as men. You and I do not win by wishing. I wish my wife understood this about me. I wish, you know, we had better communication skills. I wish, you know, we could work on this and our intimacy. I wish, it, you, don't, you, you don't gain anything by wishing. I wish, you know, things were, weren't like this at work. I wish I was more present with my kids. I wish, no, it doesn't work by just wishing. Define the win and then assess the game plan to get there. In the words of, in the words of Herm, Edwards, Herm Edwards, we play to win the game. Hello? We win to play the game. For single guys, if you're wanting to be the win, if you want your win to be what God has intended for you, you cannot date like anybody else. You cannot view sexuality in the same way everyone else does. Married men, if you're wanting the win to be marriage the way God intended it to be, then you cannot let your win be like any others. Parents, dads, your win cannot just be, oh, I just want my kid to behave. Is that where your win is? Where's the bar? Where's your bar in marriage? Oh, you know, we, we get along. Well, we haven't fought in a long time. Is that where the bar is? Where is your bar? Assess your win. I want to share with you the words of St. Ambrose of Milan. So in the year 374, just in case any of you are ever on uh, Jeopardy or anything like that, St. Ambrose, I thought this was cool, I learned this recently, he proposed the idea that in liturgical worship we do antiphonal chanting. We do it on each side. So he proposed that, just your FYI for the day. He said this, You are an athlete. Come to grips, grips with your opponent, not with your head, but with your arms. What is St. Ambrose is saying? It's like, you under, you we need to understand that we are athletes in, in, in a battle, in a war. Like, as, as, as Buna mentioned yesterday, like, we need to understand at a high level of what's going on, of the battle that we're in. But we're in athletes, and it's not just in our heads saying, yeah, I need to. No, it needs to be put into action. If I asked you, where do you want your marriage to be? Where do you want to be as a man of God? Yes, maybe you're able to articulate. Maybe you're able to write that down during quiet time and be able to assess that. But now, this like Sunday night, I pray for myself and pray for you that as we're going back to, 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 to real life, that we're able to put into action. We need to have that uncomfortable conversation. I do need to take those steps. I do need to take some of these spiritual exercises in which my church has given me. That, that, has, that has been tried and true for 2,000 years, maybe I need to not just do it passively. Maybe I need to go all in. What is that thing I need to do for us to go all in, to assess the win, and to put it into practice? And I want us to close with another quote from St. Ambrose. He said this, Like an athlete, he comes last into the arena. He lifts his eyes to heaven. He sees that his whole task awaits him. You and I have a whole task. We have tons of tasks. All of us wear multiple hats, different responsibilities on us. And we walk into an arena of all that awaiting us to try to pull us down. He chastises his body. What does the word chastise mean? Yeah, he, 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 he disciplines his body so that it will not defeat him in the contest. He anoints it with the oil of mercy. Just for us to understand. Like, why is oil such an integral part to our, to our, our, or, or to our Orthodox faith? Like, if you understand, like, uh, like athletes, gladiator, a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, if you have a wound, do you know how you would heal the wound? You put some oil. You put some oil to soothe the wound. This is why an integral part to our sacramental life as Orthodox men is that we use oil to soothe the wounds and pain that's within us, the wounds of sin. And we come into the arena, chastising, disciplining our body, yearning for the oil, 
from God to soothe the pain and sins and ache within us. He anoints it with the oil of mercy. He practices daily exhibitions of virtue. He runs with assurance to the goal of the course. He aims his blows. He darts his arms, but not at empty spaces. Earth is man's training ground. Heaven, his crown. I love that last part. Earth is man's training ground. Heaven, his crown. What's your win? Is it things here that come and go? Is it that promotion? What's, what's the win? All of this is a training ground for something so much more awaiting us. Let's aim our blows. Let's dart dart our arms, but not at empty spaces. Let's not be passive as far as our responsibility and our roles as men, but let's be focused and be intentional. It might require that uncomfortable conversation. It might, I need that uncomfortable conversation with that mentor, with that spiritual father to set some accountability. I need to put some of those boundaries in my life. Let's not us move passively as if we're beating the air. Earth is our training ground. Heaven is our crown. To him be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.